naive Bayes, I mentioned this briefly before, but um, it's particularly good when you have cases of missing data. Right, so what is missing data? Missing data is you have an observation, you have a record, and one of the attribute values is missing, right? So I have x1 through xn, and xj, I just don't know the value of it for, for whatever reason, right? So the reason could be, you know, I'm, that some guy is applying for a loan and I just didn't record his credit history for some strange reason. Or some medical test was not performed on this patient. So you have the full picture, but you don't have this medical test. So how, does, how do you deal with missing data? In general, it's hard. You have to fill in the value and, and do it somehow intelligently. With naive Bayes, it's really, really easy. What you do is you just skip that attribute for that instance. Right? So if I don't know xj, then my product goes over all attributes except for xj. So I just skip it from the product. Right? Now that seems like a horrible, horrible hack. Uh, but in fact, it's not. And, 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 and you can prove that it's not a hack. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to run through that proof in one minute. Um, so suppose I have a really simple case. I have a coin tossing example. I cost the coin three times. Uh, I get a head on the first toss. I get a tail on the, on the third toss. And I don't know what I got on the second toss. Right? I, you know, my coin just rolled away and fell into uh, somewhere where I don't see it. Right? So my event is actually head, and then question mark, and then a tail. Now, that question mark is either a head or a tail. So this event that I'm trying to capture, you can think of it, it's, um, it's kind of like two possible quantum states. It was either head, head, tail, or it, or it was head, tail, tail. And I don't know which one it was. Both of them are possible. So that, that is my event. Now, what is the probability of that event? The probability of that event is actually the sum of the probabilities for the two possible outcomes. So it's nice, you can compute it. Basically, it's, you either took this path in your universe or you took that path in your universe. And you couldn't have taken both. Right? We're assuming that the coin is a physical um, object. So, uh, so how, do you add, how does this adding of probability translate into canceling of the term? Turns out it's very natural. So in the general case, I don't have three observations. I have n observations. So if I knew the value of xj, I'd just multiply together all the probabilities, right? That's the normal way to do it. Now, I don't know xj, so what I have to do is I have to do the summation over all possible observations which only differ in the value of the jth attribute, right? So this is either a head or a table. And in general, this xj has some values. Right? So I'm going to sum up over all possible values of xj the probability of this observation assuming that I fill in that value of xj. And what does this look like? It's naive base, so this joint turns into a product of probabilities. And now I'm summing up over, on the outside, I'm summing up over all possible values of xj. But look at this. This is probability of x1 given y. Does that depend on xj? No. I can move it outside the sum. What about this one? Doesn't depend. Move it outside. In fact, I can move every term from this product outside the summation except for this one, because that's the only one that depends on xj. And once you do that, you have something like that. And what is that? And that is 1, because what you're doing is you're summing up over all possible values of xj the probability of that value given the class y. And by definition, this must be equal to 1. So the result is the term xj just cancels out. Okay.